Hey guys, as you can see, something different is going on with this video this time around. Instead of doing a normal wrap up type video, I've been really struggling not having motivation to do a wrap up video for the last two months. So uh, I'm trying to think outside the box. I'm going to do a tier ranking video of the last 22 books I've read, which covers both September and October, but that's irrelevant. This is just more so my thoughts on these books. So as you can see, I've got a tier ranking display up here. I'm just using capwing.com and I am going to just grab the covers of the 22 books I've read. Three of them were DNFs, but um, and rank them, I guess. I've never done one, a video like this before. I've always wanted to do a tier ranking video, but never really known how to go about it or what to rank. So today we are going to do that. Obviously, oops, I guess we're gonna load up Lady in the Lionheart right off the bat. <laughs> um, I have never used this program before, so let's keep that locked. Um, so we will see. Lady and the Lionheart was a pretty good book. I really liked it. Um, it was not perfection. It is about, you know, circus vibes. There is a man in the circus and he has, I'm trying to remember what, what unique trait he has that made him, okay. I do have my Goodreads up on my phone, so I'm just gonna have a quick peek on some of them. So I guess, I guess he was just a lion tamer. I thought there was more uh, to him, maybe physically or something. I can't really remember, but he has a baby. He lives in the circus. Uh, he can't really get any other kind of job because of something, and I can't remember what it is. Um, but anyway, the local doctor, his assistant, is asked to help this baby because this baby is really sick and nobody wants to help anyone from the circus because they're like untouchable but this woman does help this man and his baby and it just kind of walks with them as they try to keep this little baby alive while trying to keep their friendship hidden from both the townspeople and the circus people um yeah so we're, i think i'm comfortable with it in really good. The next one we've got is Tress of the Emerald Sea. This one I DNF'd. I DNF'd this one because I was bored, which was really surprising because I had really high hopes for it actually. Um, but what can you say? As my friend Chrissy says, if it fall, it fall. <laughs> so the next one, let's go to The Hobbit because I mean, The Hobbit. So everyone knows which category this guy belongs into. And if you disagree, don't tell me. So, perfection, obviously. Next up, um, yeah, so these ones aren't going to be in um, chronological order, even though for the most part I did read them in chronological order, but the Mrs. Jeffries books, uh, safe to say I have quite loved them all not mess up our okay so we are going to put them in really good next one the reading list this one was also a DNF this one we were asked to read this for our local book club and yeah I DNF'd it I think this one was because of language if I'm not mistaken yeah it was for the F word Wildwood is a middle grade, fantasy middle grade, which I quite liked. Um, it wasn't like a new favorite or anything, but yeah, I, I liked it. I liked it enough. Let me see what my Goodreads rating was for it. Okay, three. So why did I give it a little bit? Because to me it feels like four, maybe three and a half. Um, there were a lot of complex battle scenes, yes, and I don't like reading battle scenes. I just, I don't see the point of like, so-and-so swung the sword and so-and-so ducked and 
as he was ducking, he fell off of a thing. I don't know. I don't see why books need to describe battle scenes. So that usually reduces my enjoyment of it. So that's my reason for that. Next up, oh, those should be in order too, but I read quite a few series this chunk of time, these two months. So here's another Mrs. Jeffries, and they are all gonna go in really good. Mrs. Jeffries is a historical fiction series. Let me just put all of them in there while we're at it. Historical fiction, it's written like in today, like the late, late 2000s. Um, and I think she is still writing the series. So it is a current series, but it's historical. It's a little bit Agatha Christie-esque. Um, our main character, Mrs. Jeffries, is the housemaid to an inspector, and he... Why did it do that? Oh, I never finished <laughs> raiding Wildwood. I see that there. <laughs> so, yeah, the battle scenes were a bit much for me. I did like the fantastical element of, like, this little girl... Little girl or little boy? Little girl. She is babysitting her little baby brother and then she goes near the forest that they're not supposed to go by and these crows pick up the baby and fly to the forest and she's not allowed to go into the forest but she has to save her baby brother. So yeah, I did like the adventure aspect of that book, just less so the battle element. Hey, hey I got it to work, sweet, okay. So, what I was saying about Mrs. Jeffries, she is the housemaid of the local inspector, and he is a good inspector, I guess. He, he tries, and he does an okay job, and he has a good heart, but he's just not very good at being an inspector. So, his housemaid, Mrs. Jeffries, and the rest of the staff that he has, um, they all kind of team together and sneakily help him solve his crimes without him knowing that he's getting help um, because they they care about him and they they don't want to like hurt his feelings that he's not a very good inspector but it's really really cool to see how mrs jeffries like organizes all of the rest of the staff to like do different things and poke around different areas in town and it's just really really fun and i like the the mysteries that they solve so that is a good one. So next up, let's go with the Star Lore Legacy. I started this series, I started Nova in August, and then I completed the series in fall here. So um, I'm actually on Chuck Black's street team for the last book, Merchant, and this is a really good series. I quite like it. Um, really good or decent I kind of want to put it here but we'll put it in really good I'm I'm a decently easy sell for like a four star type book so I quite like this series it's sci-fi there's major adventure there is a little bit of romance um, but I like this this romance kind of worked for me because the the couple, the two of them, they're not together a lot. So I'm not gonna give anything else away, but they have, they, they have a time of it. So I did quite like that. As you guys know, romance is not my favorite genre, um, but this, it worked. I liked it. So we're gonna put the whole series in really good because I thought it was really good. It did give like definite like Star Wars vibes for sure and then I would say also if you like um, Brandon Sanderson St Skyward the Skyward series from Brandon Sanderson I would say uh, check out this series for sure and there's there's major biblical allegory allegory 
See, I struggle with the term allegory because I don't think every story that portrays the gospel message is an allegory. Um, but there were some allegorical elements in this storytelling for sure. So there's that. We've got The Treasure Box by Penelope J. Stokes. This one is also sci-fi. It, it was actually kind of cool too because, where do I put it? Do I put it in decent? It's a little bit above decent, but so Treasure Box is I'll just really briefly summarize it and say this girl finds a program, um, a really old computer program, and when she puts it on, she is watching a person's real life from history unfold. So it's told a little bit like a dual timeline, however in this story the dual timelines are kind of interacting in that um, like this woman she goes to work but all she can think about is this program sitting at home and she's like I wonder what they're doing so when she she really is like addicted to this because she comes home and she puts the program on and she's watching and she like watches from different perspectives of the people and she I don't know it's really cool it's like it's like having a fly on the wall in your life but but the people in the program don't know that anyone's watching them it's really really kind of an interesting twist I would say. Let's do Wildflower Pages. This is a Christian poetry book and it's very nature centric so I will put it in decent because it was good but I mean I did highlight, not highlight, it was a library book, but I did take note of quite a few of the, the poems that were in here and I really really liked those ones but a bunch of them fell flat for me which I feel like is kind of just how poetry goes. I would be surprised if anyone could like really give a five star rating to a poetry book implying that they absolutely loved every poem. You know what I mean? I would be surprised. I mean I'm sure it's not impossible but I'd be surprised. Next up, The Storied Life of A.J. Fickrey. I've actually wanted to read this book for years and I own it, it's on my bookshelf, but no longer because I DNF'd this book. Um, let's see, I think it was, yeah, it was for language also. So the F word and so I DNF'd it. And that's okay. I think we all have our own reasons for DNFing books and that's good. The next one is As I Lay Dying and honestly I don't remember what this book is about which sometimes to me says it might not be that good of a book if you can't remember it but let's see what my review says. Okay there's quite a bit of language, no F words, but otherwise quite a bit of language, sexual innu innuendos and content. Um, and in my review I say this writing felt overly descriptive in a way that confused me as to what we were talking about all the time. So I was confused, I remember feeling that way, and I did not give it a very good rating. So, um, I do what uh, was it the worst see for me it's kind of hard to say the worst because if I think a book is gonna be the worst I will probably have DNF'd it so I don't I don't really read cover to cover books that I think are the worst you know what I mean I'm gonna leave it there it can hover over not great and the worst let me know if you have read as I lay dying next up Let's do Merlin's Blade. Now, this is Christian fantasy. I devoured this trilogy so fast. It is, this first trilogy is more of a Merlin King Arthur retelling. Um, King Arthur is in the book, but he's a baby. So, 
Yes, it is very much a really good book. Especially as far as um, retellings go. I've never actually read an Arthur retelling, so I'm really enjoying my time here. It is fantasy, it is magical, um, and our main character is Merlin. So I would recommend it. If you like fantasy, I definitely would recommend this trilogy. So the second book was Merlin's Shadow. I read the third book this month, so I'm not including it in here because uh, I didn't read it in time to fit the two month bracket here. Uh, but I also really like the second one. The third one was probably probably my lesser favorite of the three, but I liked it still. So I really, really like this series and again, would recommend. Let's do the Wonderland Trials. I buddy read this duology with the beautiful Chrissy. I already mentioned her, but she is lovely. I saw that she was reading this one and I had read this one last year and I didn't love it. And I really love Alice in Wonderland and I, I enjoy the prospect of reading Alice in Wonderland retellings. So when I found out that there was a Christian author writing an Alice in Wonderland retelling, I was super jazzed. But it kind of fell flat for me last year and this year when I found out Chrissy was reading it, I was like, oh, I really love Buddy reading with Chrissy and I was hoping that reading it with somebody would help me to love it more or maybe get more out of it but unfortunately it was still like a it, it, it was good I liked it more the second time but still wasn't what I wanted it to be and I'm still in the process of analyzing why that is um yeah because I can't pinpoint any like really specific reasons why it falls flat for me but I would say both books one and two would be in the decent realm if you like Christian fantasy I would definitely say check it out um, if you're an Alice in Wonderland fan let me know how you felt about this retelling I'm curious and do I No, I'm not done yet I have Reckoning at Gossamer Pond by Jamie Jo Wright this is actually one of my favorites um, it's not my favorite because my favorite is The Haunting at Bonaventure Circus, but this one might be next for my Jamie Jo Wright books. Um, let me just double check what I rated it. I gave it a four star and again, as seems to be the trend with Jamie Jo Wright books, I prefer the historical timeline. So this is where I'm landing on my September, October wrap up. Let me know what you guys think of any of the books that we discussed here. I'm curious what you guys thought of this um, video format style. I don't think it's going to become um, my new thing, but I was just really struggling. Every time I thought about doing a typical wrap up, I was like, I don't feel like it. So I had to do something in order to get my thoughts out on these books. Let me know what you guys thought. But um, yeah, let me know what you read too in the months of September and October. Maybe give me like your best and worst. And yeah, let's just chat about these books in the comments below. I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.